at what age did you discover you had a passion for strength and conditioning? Yeah, look, that's a while, a while ago now, isn't it? I, I think if I was to look back on, on sort of where it all started, um, I was back in 1994, which is a long time ago, I was a member of the Victorian Institute, Institute of Sport Cricket Squad. And, you know, I was still sort of aspiring to wear the baggy green myself. And as part of that scholarship program, I'd, it was my last year of high school, I'd, I'd have to travel in three times a week into RMIT where I'd do my weights program. And it was my first exposure to what is classically known as strength conditioning. And a guy named Vern McMillan was the strength conditioning coach for the Victorian Institute of Sport then. And I'd go in there as a sort of 17-year-old and I'd be training at, you know, 6.30 in the morning and members of the awesome foursome would be, you know, power cleaning weights and, you know, other really elite athletes would be walking around the, RM, the old RMIT gym in the city. And I was amazed and blown away by what people could do. Uh, early on in your career, like as you mentioned, um, uh, Vern McMillan, well, who were some other strong influences that uh, helped you along your way? Yeah, the, fir- the first person who gave me a, gave me a shot was David Butterfin. You know, I, I was in my you know, final year of my undergrad degree and David Butterfin was at the North Melbourne Football Club at the time and, and through some personal connections through, through my cricket, and, you know, he gave me a bit of a shot and it was a volunteer it was doing all of the sort of bits and pieces work at the North Melbourne Footy Club, trying to essentially help David's job um, to be a little bit easier. You know, the resources at an AFL club in the late 90s were not the same as they are now. Um, so I was really lucky to A, get, a, get an opportunity and B, because there wasn't, you know, every man and his dog there, I was able to, you know, get a feel for all parts of the program. You've had a lot of leadership positions across different sports. Is that something that you've worked on a lot, the leadership? Uh, communication, um, you know, performance meetings, all the things that come with being in a managerial position, or is it something that you've learned through experience um, and being, you know, by getting those jobs? It's both. So, you know, like, uh, fortunately, when you're, when you're sort of in positions of, of leadership, you get exposed to opportunities to develop more of those skills and you get opportunities to sort of identify where you, where some of your shortcomings or opportunities, so your performance opportunities might lie. Um, but certainly, I mean, it's and certainly more recently, you know, that, that's an area that's of great interest to me is how I can actually be a more effective leader. How can, how can I be a more effective communicator, making sure that, you know, constantly seeking feedback from people on what's working, what's not working. Those are, those are things that, I, that are hugely valuable to me. If you're getting, uh, let's say, 10 different things, there's a couple that, that line up, but 10 different things, um, how do you manage How do you filter that to action? Those areas. Uh, yeah, so so I, I've, I've talked about this. One one of the so one of the things is that um, as a, trying to trying to um, identify and prioritize those responses that are, are generally relatively consistent. You know, you'll, you'll always get ten things, right? and there'll be ten different things. But in amongst the ten, you'll find that there's one to three things that are re- that generally are, consi- are a consistent theme. So I'll prioritize those, uh, but they also need to be, they also need to be sort of understood in, in conjunction with your own sort of personal an, an analysis and insights. So understanding how do I, how, how do I think I'm going? Where am I being effective? What's not, what's not working? Okay. Is there, is there some common ground with the responses I'm getting from the people around me? And those are the things that I tend to attack first. Favorite inspirational quote or life motto? The thing I always find about, about quotes is they're very, very context specific. So I, I think that, you know, different quotes will resonate at different times in your life. But one of the, one of the things that I've, I've probably stuck with me is, is, is that, you know, no plan, and apologies for the sort of war reference, I certainly don't want to glorify the sort of military environment at, at the current time, but certainly the quote, no plan survives first contact with the enemy, I think holds, holds a lot of resonance for me in what we do. Um, we have to plan. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, re- you know, religious planner. I like to be well planned. I like to be well prepared. But it just reminds me that actually, it's really important to be adaptable once, once you hit the trenches, because the reality is that the plan never goes to plan. Mm.